Hello, I'm Henry Acosta, and this is Health Professional Radio. Did you know that one in five Australians, nearly five million people, don't know that bleeding when brushing, swollen, or red gums are early signs of gum problems? The call comes as Oral-B launches its new gum care toothpaste range with three, three toothpastes with dual action technology which help revitalize gums and restore weakened enamel in two weeks. Today, we have Matt Hopcraft with us today. He is an Oral-B consultant and is one of the leading Australian dentists around the nation. And we're going to talk about teeth and how it is important to keep our teeth healthy and the ways that we can keep them healthy. Or if they're not healthy right now, then ways to get them to a healthier level. Welcome to the show, Matt, and thanks for coming in today. And yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Henry. Good to talk. And can you give us a little bit more background about who you are and what you do and where you do it? Sure. So my name is Matt. Um, I'm currently working as a, as a clinical advisor at the dental hospital in Melbourne, and I'm also a consultant for Oral-B. I've had probably 20 years of experience in teaching and, and research uh, at the University of Melbourne in sort of public health. Um, I used to work in private practice. I used to work in the army as a dentist, so I've got a lot of experience around the traps. I see. Um, as a dentist, what do you think is one of the biggest issues right now that Australians are facing with regards to their oral health? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's really interesting because we've got all of this, you know, great technology and great innovation and, you know, we've never had better access in, in some ways to really good oral health care and, and good products to look after our teeth. but. We still see so much um, dental problems out there in the community and in fact, you know, we're sort of starting to see, um, like you said, one in five Australians with, with sort of moderate to severe gum disease, tooth decay rates are increasing in, in young children. Um, and that's, you know, I think there's a lot of complacency in, in the community. People don't seem to always value or think about their oral health maybe in the same way that they do with, with some of their other problems. Um, so, you know, I think that's, that, that's a real concern. And what are the usual warning signs to look out for when you see that, or maybe it shows that you have gum problems? Yeah, I mean, gum, gum problems are a really interesting thing. You know, at, at that very early stage, you know, if you don't brush your teeth for a few days and plaque builds up on your gums and they start to become a little bit red, maybe a little bit swollen, you can see, and, and certainly bleeding when you brush your teeth. And most people think of that as a, as a sign to stop brushing. Um, you know, they're a little bit worried that if it's bleeding, they stop brushing. But really, the, the key thing there is to make sure that you find those areas where, where there is a little bit of bleeding and really concentrate on them a little bit more. And with some good cleaning, flossing uh, in there, you will be able to um, reverse those early signs of gum disease, what we would call gingivitis. But if you do let that progress, um, it starts to break down the gum tissues that hold the teeth in place, it becomes a lot more serious and, and it gets to a stage where it, it is not reversible anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you know that's when people are starting to risk potentially losing their teeth. I see. And uh, what are the ways that we can do to prevent that from happening or from, to prevent gingivitis or to make sure our teeth get healthy? Yeah, so I mean the, the real case, Henry, I guess, uh, you know, really good oral hygiene. So it's it's brushing twice a day for two minutes at a time. And, you know, it, it might surprise you, but, you know, the average person probably doesn't brush twice a day and, and probably only brushes for less than a minute each time. Um, and it's it's just not long enough. And we see that, unfortunately, in clinical practice. And that's why we're seeing all of these problems. So um, I think one of the, the things, I, you know, I use a, an Oral-B electric toothbrush. It has a two-minute timer. It, it virtually forces you to brush for two minutes. So I think <laughs> things like that are really good. Um, there's some neat little apps that you can get, you know, for, for kids to encourage them to make sure that they brush for two minutes as well. Mm -hmm. Flossing is obviously important because you can't get a toothbrush uh, in between all of those teeth. So that's a really good way to keep uh, clean in between teeth. And then, as you said at the start, you know, Oral-B just launched this new toothpaste really focusing on gum care, um, you know, with an active ingredient um, called stannous fluoride, which is designed to to kill bacteria and, and inhibit the bacteria uh, in the mouth that's responsible for gum disease, stop it from regrowing, and that's been shown to be a really effective way of helping to prevent gum disease. Uh, what are the dangers of leaving the gum problems untreated? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of different things that we need to be concerned about. Obviously, like I said before, the, the gum problems aren't treated. 
the gum tissue starts to break down, the teeth become loose, um, and people are at risk of, you know, losing teeth um, and, and, you know, having difficulty chewing and di issues with nutrition. Um, there are also some, I guess, some subgroups of people that we need to be concerned about. So there, there are good links now in the research between gum disease and diabetes, gum disease and heart disease, um, gum disease and stroke, maybe with pregnancy as well. So there are there's certainly groups in the in the community where um, improving their their gum health can actually be a benefit for their overall health. Um, diabetes is is a really people with poorly controlled diabetes are more at risk of gum disease, but equally uh, people with poorly controlled gum disease do have a little bit more difficulty maintaining their, their glycemic control. So the gum disease can actually make their their diabetes a little bit a little bit worse. So um, you know, there's a range of reasons why we want to really focus on um, getting things treated um, and the, the things that people can do at home, but then making sure that you're up to see a dental professional regularly for care as well. And who are the people who are most at risk with getting gum problems? Yeah, so gum gum disease tends to be a, a a thing that happens as people get older. So you know, certainly in middle age to older age groups, we tend to see it more. Um, smokers are, are greatly at risk of gum disease. Um, you know, smoking sort of interferes with the way that the body heals, so they tend to be a, a lot more at risk. Like I said, pregnant women with um, with hormonal changes, diabetics. Uh, you know, a lot of groups out there in the community that we really need to focus on. And since there's a lot of seasons where we tend to eat a lot or a lot of times where we celebrate like birthday parties or maybe even just like Christmas and Thanksgiving, uh, what what's the what kind of impact does that do to your teeth? Yeah, so I mean obviously we we've talked a lot about gum disease. Tooth decay is the other the other really big problem and we know that um, the amount of sugar that we eat and how often we eat sugar is really strongly associated with, with tooth decay. Um, in Australia, it's frightening. One in two kids have tooth decay by the age of six years and mm -hmm. about one in ten of those kids have about ten teeth with, with decay. So there's some really frightening problems with tooth decay out there. Um, I don't advocate people to, to give up sugar completely. I mean, I think it's important that people have treats and, you know, birthday, as you said, birthday parties at Christmas time and, um, you know, various other um, celebrations. It's, it's, it's okay to have some sugar, but I think it's important to not have too much sugar. Yeah. And again, we're getting back to this importance of good oral hygiene, brushing your teeth, flossing, using fluoridated toothpaste um, will all be things that will help to prevent tooth decay as well. And since you mentioned children and kids, um, it, we, everyone knows it's rather difficult to get children to get their to give or help them have a healthy habit with regards to their teeth and with regards to cleaning it. Uh, what are the ways that we can do to introduce them to a healthier uh, lifestyle with regards to their gums and teeth? Yeah, it's, it's always tough. I'm a, I'm a parent of two kids, and it's always a challenge to get your kids to do anything. Um, I think part of it as a parent is to role model. So when they see you brushing your teeth, taking good care of your teeth, eating well, I think that sets a good example. And starting the kids off as, as young as you can. So you know, as soon as those teeth start coming through, cleaning them even just with a soft cloth, then getting to a toothbrush and making kids understand that that's just a normal part of the routine. And then as they get older, I think it's just, you know, how do you educate them to understand the sorts of things that are harmful in in the diet and what they're eating and, you know, teaching them to look at foods and see how much sugar is in there um, so that they can understand what things are healthy and what things aren't. Um, and, you know, in that broader kind of discussion that we have with our kids, hopefully, about what's healthy and what's not, you know, how some of the problems might impact on them later in life. So if they don't start looking after their teeth now, their risk of having tooth decay or having gum disease can be a problem for them down the track. I see. And uh, what are the main keys to maintaining oral health? Well, I think the, the, the main keys to maintaining good oral health are those, those things around brushing two minutes twice a day. And if you get that right, that's going to get you a long way mm -hmm. to, to having healthy teeth and healthy gums. Um, flossing regularly, getting in between those back teeth particularly. Um, what a lot of people forget to do is, is change their toothbrush. They keep using the same toothbrush over and over. 
the bristles start to wear out, they're not as effective. So every three months, um, every replace months. the every two. To th I reckon every two to three months, um, yeah. replace the replace the toothbrush, um, and then look at look at sort of specialised products. If you do have particular problems, then look for specialised products that are going to help you. I mean, I I recommend always to patients an oral B electric toothbrush because. They're far and away shown to be the most effective way of removing plaque. The, there's been a number of um, Cochrane collaboration reviews that, that show that quite clearly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the stannous fluoride, the new gum paste, is very effective in targeting gum disease. And then obviously I think the other thing that's really key, make sure that you get across to your dental professional um, for your checkups because we can catch things early, we can prevent things and not let things get out of hand too much. With regards to... Yeah, gum and teeth health. Uh, what are the most common misconceptions that you get when you, during an appointment, or people always ask you? Oh, I think I think people are, are very confused about the bleeding gums, um, and they think that that means that there's a significant problem, and it and it causes them to stop brushing um, and not realizing that perhaps that's a sign of, of an area just that they're not cleaning quite so well. So that's a really common one that that. We always, you know, want to try and get across to people that if you notice bleeding gums, then focus on that area a little bit more. It's a sign that you're perhaps, you know, missing an area in your mouth. Um, and if we can get people to do that, I think that goes a long way to improving their gum health. And what's the main takeaway message that you want our listeners to learn from this interview? I think the main message, Henry, is, you know, our teeth are important. Our teeth and our, and our mouth, our gum health is, is vitally important. Um, to our overall health, it helps us to to eat, to chew, nutrition, smile, our self esteem. So value your oral health as much as you value the rest of your health, um, and therefore within that, you know, do some of the things that we've been talking about. Really take good care with your toothbrushing, um, with your oral hygiene routine. Use good products that we know are going to help to achieve good oral health, and um, you know, you'll be able to maintain those teeth and, and gums for the rest of your life. Awesome. And for a last question, um, what are the ways that people can reach out to you or, or if they want to know more about um, getting healthier teeth and healthier gums, uh, yeah, how can they find you guys or what can they do to uh, find out how they can get that info? Certainly, Henry, there's a lot of information out there that's available, which is, which is really great, um, just generally online. But, um, you know, oralb.com.au has some information um, you can find us on Facebook and ask Rob the dentist a question and, and Rob's always happy to, to answer people and, and give oral health advice. Um, you know, broad oral health advice, it's obviously hard to, to answer specific questions without seeing people. Um, but yeah, certainly through, through the Oral-B website and uh, Facebook page, there's a, lots of good ways to contact us. Awesome. Well, that's all our questions for today and thank you for coming in the show, Matt. Thanks for having me, Henry. And that was Matt Hapcraft, one of Australia's leading dentists and one of RLB's consultants. Uh, we just finished talking about teeth and how to get them healthy and keep them healthy. If you're interested in learning more about teeth and other health-related topics, you can li listen to us on www.healthprofessionalradio.com.au or on www.hpr.fm. You can also find us on SoundCloud and iTunes. I'm Henry Acosta, and this is Health Professional Radio. Thanks for tuning in.